What's up everyone? My name's Oak, just like the tree, and I'm one of the racket experts here at Tennis Warehouse. And after seeing the thumbnail of this video, you might be asking yourself, what are grommets, where are they, and why I should be carrying it all? Well, grommets are situated around the edge of the racket perimeter's head. They were originally incorporated into frames in order to house and protect the strings themselves, as well as prolonging the lifespan of the racket. At the top, you'll see what's called the bumper guard, which provides a physical buffer between you, your racket, and the court. At the bottom, you'll see the throat piece, which anchors the primary mains along your main hitting zone. And then lastly are the two side pieces, which provide a secure set of rows for the crosses to sit in. Grommets have come a long way in terms of both physical geometry and material composition, and manufacturers are always looking for ways to improve on both of these qualities to enhance your overall playing experience. Now, before we proceed, let me just say that this is one way of approaching what is notoriously a difficult task. Remember with grommets, that patience is key, and some manufacturers like Babolat and others will have internal strips that make this task much more difficult. Due to the nature of tennis, grommets just simply become worn down over time. Any small breakage or splintering on or within the grommets can cause ultimate premature damage to the rackets themselves. And this will damage the housing for your strings, which can damage your racket, your hitting experience, all of which can be detrimental to your time on court. If you're on the fence about whether or not you need to replace your grommets, you probably should anyway, but we have some examples for you in order to help you make that decision. Let's take a look. First up, we have an example where the top bumper piece is worn through directly to the graphite underneath. And this is never something you want, so it's a good idea to periodically check this top piece to make sure that you're not scraping on the ground. And oftentimes, it may be the only thing that actually needs replacing, but it's probably a good idea to still swap out the rest of the pieces anyhow. Next up, we have an example where the grommet is splintering on the exterior of the bumper guard. This is never something you want because it could snag on a piece of clothing or alter your swing somehow, and it's just gonna get in the way, so you definitely wanna replace this one. Next up, we have an example where the wide or the flared grommets has become so flared that the string itself would actually rub directly on the racket. This is never something you want because it'll disconnect you from your overall feel during your hitting experience, and it'll wear directly on the graphite of the racket itself. So this is definitely something that you would want to replace as the strings are designed to sit in the grommet holes, not on the frame. Now, you may be able to reshape or redeem these grommets somehow, but their structural integrity is ultimately compromised, so it's probably a good idea to go ahead and replace them as well. Let's take a look at some cracked grommets next. While these may appear okay too, the cracked grommet is dangerous because it can lead to sawing on the strings itself, and this will cause long-term damage to your racket as well as the string bed, so it's a good idea to get these replaced. Oftentimes, grommets are gonna be generation specific from one to the next, so you'll have to go through some extensive work to maybe locate them. Now for the fun bit, the removal. But first, let's go over the tools you might need. The two most important tools you'll need will be a pair of pliers, which will be great for the removal of the grommets, and an awl. The awl is maybe gonna be the most important tool here for both the insertion and the removal, and you'll wanna be extremely careful to not bend or crush the tubes during either of these moments. Elsewhere, you might want to use what's called a grommet grinder to break down the grommets while they're in the frame itself. And you can use clippers to cut them into more manageable pieces as you remove them as well. And while you want to take great care to preserve the integrity of your frame, the actual grommets can be trashed or discarded from use. If you're rebuilding the frame at all, you can use what's called custom or fitx grommets to repair individual holes. And if you need a larger bridge, you can use nylon tubing for this part. And then if you're attaching the bumper guard and need a little bit of additional help, a zip tie for anchoring can be extremely helpful. Lastly, and hopefully you don't have to use this, is a heat gun. And this can be used to make the plastic more malleable. And usually that's most helpful for attaching the top bumper piece. So we'll start by removing the throat piece. Hopefully this should slide out fairly easily with not a lot of resistance. If you need to, you can use some chapstick to make this process easier. Next up, we'll remove the top insert. And from there, we'll move on to the flared grommets, which you'll want to cut off. As you do this, make sure that no debris falls inside the frame as it could get stuck in there forever. 
And then you'll want to start slowly using your awl to pull out your grommets. And just be careful to not damage the frame, but the grommets themselves you can discard. Do the same thing on the other side. You can use the butt end of the awl here. That should help you out. And then lastly, you'll want to remove the top bumper guard. Same thing here. And that's it. Now with all the grommets removed, you'll want to quickly wipe down your frame and then just be sure to see if there's any stray graphite or debris on the inside. That'll get in the way, so make sure that's not there. And then you're ready for the installation process. So you'll want to start with inserting the throat piece into the bottom of the hoop. This is usually the easiest part and you should feel little to no resistance. And then from there, you'll want to start with the side pieces. Make sure you align these properly, and then you can use your awl to help you out here. Just be sure that you don't crush or bend these upon entry. And then oftentimes it's extremely helpful to give yourself a little map of where you're going. And you can align the next grommet in line. And then just slowly work your way up the frame one by one. And then we'll move to the other side, same thing. All right. And now you're ready to install the top bumper guard. So you'll want to start with anchoring the top bumper piece on one side of the frame. Use your awl if necessary. And then you'll slowly just work it through. And then we'll just go one by one. Once you've got one side anchor, make sure you get all your grommets through. We'll move on to the other side. Just slowly working across the top. And one thing you can do here is roll along the bottom to get the grommets more flush. All right, and then lastly, you'll take the top insert. And this should just slot in nicely at the top there. And just like that, your frame is ready to be restrung. Now, if your installation is proving a little bit more difficult than that, 
You can always use some zip ties to help anchor things or a heat gun to make the plastic more malleable and workable. At this point, your racket is ready to be restrung. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below, or you can always email us at rackets at tennis-warehouse.com. Thanks for watching. For more information and videos, check out Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Only, and Tennis Warehouse Europe. Thank you.